Yeah, I'm ready. So where do they call you? Uh, my real name or my nickname? You can go ahead and say both. Uh, my real name is Victor, Victor Leah. And, you know, my nickname is Nutty, you know, like Nutty, N-U-T-T-Y. No. Like the Nutty Bars. Yeah, like the Nutty Bars. <laughs> <laughs> what are you incarcerated for and how long is your sentence? Um, right now I'm currently incarcerated for a kidnap, uh, solid, serious bodily injury, uh, 10 year gang enhancement and it's all of a deadly weapon, 17 years total, and I've been down 14 years in prison. And next year is my release date. Thank God. Where are you from right here on the streets? I'm from Pomona, California. Uh, from Eastside Ghetto Family, Pomona. You know, I'm from, that's my neighborhood. Used to be. Now, um, is, is Ghetto Family a, a newer barrio inside of Pomona? Yes, yeah, it is. Can you tell me how yeah. it started and does it get along with other barrios right there in Pomona? Like, do you guys get along with Cherryville and 12th Street and all that? Um, I mean, we started, you know, with my homies, you know, like, I don't want to say, you know, their names and stuff, you know, I'd rather just keep them, you know, out of it, but, um, you know, my homies, you know, we used to be Tigers, you know, so, originally we started in South Central, and then, you know, we branched to Pomona, and then in Pomona, you know, we grew up, you know, like, you know, my homies, you know, we kind of got a lot of numbers, you know, heads, and then, you know, eventually, like, we started, like, just 2004, you know, like, that's when my homies just grew up, you know, they started, like, turning up all the way from there, you know, and then, you know, a lot of us started hitting prison, and then, you know, eventually became a part, you know, became a neighborhood, you know. It took a, yeah, a lot of, you know. Can you tell um, me about that issue? I, I've, I've always wanted to know how, how a attacking crew, you know, becomes an established body, you know, that falls underneath, you know, the umbrella. You, could, you you know, that's what I was going to say, you know, like, we fell underneath the umbrella, right? So, man, bro, uh, there's certain things, you know, that I feel like, me personally, like, I still got, you know, regardless, you know, I, I dropped out, you know, but I didn't mean, you know, I wasn't validated, so I didn't have to go through a debriefing process, you know? Um, for, just for me, you know? Like, fortunately for me, I didn't have to go through that, you know? So, uh, it's kind of uncomfortable, you know? But, you know, like, you know, it just, it's not just something that, you know, it's easy. It happens overnight, you know? Like, it took years for us to get to where we wanted to be. And... You know, like, it took a lot of sacrifice, you know, like, personally, you know, like, I got homies that are never going home, you know, because of what they sacrificed for, you know, and, you know, I got homies that are dead, I got homies that are in prison doing life, you know, because of the sacrifice they made when we chose to become that, you know, when we chose to become a part of that. You know, that was part of the sacrifice that we made, you know, like, it, it's a lot to it. But, you know, with that stuff, like, I don't like to get too in detail, you know. Like, I'm not, I don't mean no disrespect to you, Anthony, you know, like, I appreciate you doing this, you know, and hearing my story, you know. I don't even care, bro, man. I completely understand, man, how it be going, bro. Yeah. Was there any, was yeah. there any neighborhood that was against you guys? 
they don't like you, you know, trash oh, yeah. into their neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, a lot, you know, like, a lot, you know, like, you know, you got other hoods, like, you know, Pomona Sud Lakotis, you know, Pomona Sud Olive, you know, like, you know, them hoods to me, like, those are, like, the top of the top, like, those are the ones that I hated, you know, like, that I used to hate, since I was a kid, I hated all the street, you know, like, since I was a kid, I, I didn't like your Cortez, so, you know, when I became part of my homies, it was natural for me to, like, you know, for all of us, like, you know, like, those are our enemies, and, you know, like, excuse my language, you know, I don't mean to be so vulgar, but when I was younger, yeah, that's how I thought, you know, but you'd be surprised, like, um, I've met, you know, three-way call alert. I met people on the streets where we were trying to kill each other on the streets, and then in here, you know, that person that I thought that was my enemy and I was trying to kill him, he, I like actually got to know some of them on like, you know, like on um, face to face, like, you know, shaking hands, eating food with them, spreads, you know, like, and then that person ends up having my back more than anybody else. And we were trying to kill each other in the streets, you know? Like, and so I kind of always tripped on that, you know? Like, but, uh, yeah, those would be the two, the two neighborhoods. And a lot of other ones, too, they hated on us, you know, because, you know, like, in Pomona, we were, uh, we're the only Titan crew that actually became a gang, you know? So, yeah, we got a lot, we had a lot of people that would hate on us, you know? You said that some of these, you know, some of your fellow friends had made sacrifices, the ultimate sacrifice, which is losing their lives. Do you feel comfortable, perhaps, on on telling me about some of your friends that have passed away due to this gang violence? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, you no, know, I lost, you know, one of my little homies, uh, Stalin, you know, like, rest in peace, you know, my homie Trouble. Um, rest in peace too. Uh, Salim, you know, he was a little young kid, man. He was young and he was just, I don't know, I don't know what happened, you know, and he was just involved with something and then, you know, he ended up, he actually killed his, his girlfriend and then, you know, I, he shot himself. But, you know, I lost him. I mean, there's a few homies that, you know, like, you know, because I'm a little older, I've been down 14 years, so I, I haven't got to meet a lot of the younger ones. I've only talked to them, and some of them passed away, too, you know, like. But I say the main one that really affected me from my... Three-way call alert. My little homie fell in, you know. That was the main one that, like, really, you know, through the lifestyle, you know, like. Using drugs and you know, I don't know if he, I don't know the story, you know, like I could only assume, you know, like what I thought he was going through, through his mind, you know. But it was, it was all part of the game of why, why he did what he did, you know. Did you almost lose your life due to this uh, senseless game banging? Yeah, yeah. Lots of times, you know, like, even when I was younger, you know, like, growing up with my dad, you know, like, when, when Terry Joe had a green light, like, You have 60 seconds remaining. Oh, uh, you want me to call you back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said who had the green light? Oh, uh, uh, Terry Joe, like, in the early 90s. Yeah, like, the late... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So, you know, like, I'll say this, like, because they used to get, uh, all, all the neighborhoods, they used to drive, drive through, right? And uh, I lived, like, right in the horseshoe of Cherryville, so, like, we lived by the cross street from the railroad track, so they would always come in and they would be shooting at uh, all, all the, the little young fools from Cherryville, you know? And I was just a little kid, like, I'll be right there playing. 
know. I seen fools get shot, like you know. So I I I grew up seeing that, just, like being around it, you know, like gang banging, you know. Did you call back? <clears throat> yeah, I'll call back right. I would say like um like I never been shot, you know. Like in prison though, I've been stabbed, you know. I've been sliced. Uh, I've been like had somebody throw sheets on my neck and try to choke me, you know, like, you know, so I've been through stuff like that in prison, you know, on the streets I was always like putting, you know, on my toes, you know, with everything, but I got shot at, I got homies that got shot in front of me, you know, I, I have family members that died, you know, like from getting shot, uh, but myself, like, you know, I was fortunate, you know, to not get shot out there, you know. So, so you mentioned that that you almost lost your you almost lost your life because they came by your dad's side. So, I, I take it your family is, is is part of the neighborhood, or at least your dad is, or was. Um, my dad was. Uh, he, you know, but he changed his life. Like, you know, he he's actually uh, doing good. You know, he's actually you know living a, a good life now. You know, so that's somebody that you know to me is like he's. He's a role model in my life, you know, like one of the role models because he came, he came from the same place that I came from, you know, but he made it, like he actually did something, you know, he was, it took him a while, you know, but, you know, like he always, you know, like he, he went through stages himself, you know, to become the man that he is today. So, you know, that's like one of my mentors, you know, and, and one of them, you know, like the people that, you know, I, I look up to, you know, my role model, you know. So, that's the, actually the biggest one now, you know, like I actually look back and reflect on the people that I used to think that were like, oh, that I'm going to be like him. And now I'm older, I'm like, man, that's so idiotic, you know, like... It was just so like, damn, why, why, why wasn't I looking up to these guys riding bikes and khakis and bald heads tatted up, you know, like, holding a gun? Like, I thought that was cool, you know, when I was younger, but instead of like, looking at life from a different perspective, you know, like, buying cars, you know, like, learning to save money, you know, like, but, uh, yeah, you know, my dad and my family, they're, they're you know, like, they're from Cherryville, you know, that, that side of my family, they're, they're from that area, from the west, so, but, you know, I grew up more, I grew up with both sides of my family, but I grew up more, like, uh, in the south side of Pomona and the east side, you know, so, that's how I came from my hood, you know, from the east side. You said that Cherryville Pomona had caught in the green light. Do you know why? No, um, no, I was young, you know, like, I didn't know why. I just knew that, you know, they were, everybody was... You know, gunning on them, you know, back in those days, you know, like, I wouldn't know, you know, exactly why, you know. Can you tell me about your case, Victor? Would you be able to break it down to that day and everything leading up to it? And what was it that happened, man? With my case? Well... I was uh, going through a lot of things at that time in my life, you know, like I was in a, you know, a very bad, toxic relationship, uh, and me and, you know, the other individual, you know, we ended up leaving, you know, and uh, we just, you know, decided to go our way, and... You know, I kind of fell back into uh, 
the streets, you know, like I kind of start falling back because like for a moment, you know, like I was, I actually had a job. I had things that was, that was going for myself, you know, like, and, um, but the thing was, you know, at that time, I didn't have, you know, a mentor. I didn't have somebody like that would show me how to do the right thing. Nobody cared, you know, at that time. That's how I felt, you know. But they probably could say they cared, but, you know, so I was kind of spiraling, you know. I started, uh, I actually never used drugs, right? Like, no, I never used uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I never used uh, uh, right until oh, 2010, like 2009, actually, the end of 2009, you know. And um, I was 20, I was 20 years old, you know, and I never touched it like I used to, like, my mind for drugs. At that time, it was like, I'm better than everybody. I just smoke weed and drink, and I'm better, you know, like, you know, you know, like, that was it, you know, pop pills. But I used to think that I was better than everybody. But when I hit rock bottom, you know, I, I feel that was my rock bottom. You know, I went through a young, I didn't have nowhere to stay. I was homeless. So... You know, I was sleeping in my home's garage, so I kind of fell back into the pattern of the streets, you know, and then, um, you know, it, it's kind of crazy, like, you know, like, I, I'm not kidding you, like, there was times throughout, throughout that, that year where just random people, like, like, will come up to me and tell me like, hey, you know, God has a calling for you, you know, like, you, you need to stop what you're doing and and you need to let go, you know, like, uh, there was actually a black lady, you know, and I was smoking in the park. Just certain, certain things like that, they kind of stand out to me, you know, like, I, I'm not trying to go around the question of what you asked me to tell you, but to me, I feel it's necessary that I say this, you know. Um... And the reason why is because it's, it's like all these events led up to me coming to prison, you know. So, you know, I was out there homeless, you know, like, you know, going to pass different, different spots with my homies. And, you know, I would fall asleep. My homies would leave me, you know. So then I wake up and I'm around people that I don't know. So I felt uncomfortable, you know. So I told my homies, like, hey, cool, like, why do you leave me, you know, like, what the hell, like, so, you know, he's like, well, you know, start getting high, too, so, so you can stay up. So, uh, you know, I start getting high. So, at, at that time, you know, I was still young, and then plus I had never experienced that that trip with methamphetamine, bro. So, I think, you know, to me, my, the, what I feel is like that's what kind of led me to be incarcerated, you know. It led me to being in the garage that day to my homie coming up and saying, hey, let's go do this. Like, you know, we're going to go come up on a lake. We were so then from, from that, you know, we end up going to, uh, it's a 7 11, you know, where we met the dude. And then we end up, you know, robbing him, beating him up, carjacking him, you know, like, that's all, you know, that's what we did, like, to me, like, I did, I did my time for the time, you know, like, and I'm, I'm remorseful for what I did, you know, I feel bad, you know, but in my head at, at that time, you know, like, I've been through so much traumatic events in my life. To where it's not like I, I feel compassion, bro. Like I'm, I'm a compassionate human being, bro. Like I, I care. Like, um, so that dude is looking for a you know, whatever he's a paisa, a paisa, you know. And you know, I beat him up, I robbed him, you know. Like, and um, yeah, I, I feel bad, you know. Like, regardless of this. 
you know, the, the stuff that he was doing, that's what led up to my crime, you know, like, you know, we kidnapped him, beat him up, um, took his car, and then 10 months later, I ended up, you know, uh, my ex, the girl that I was telling you that we had split up, you know, uh, I ended up going and to her house to go meet up with her, and, and she had some dude over that was my enemy, you know, and, you know, that dude, uh, he started, you know, trying to bang on me, whatever, and then I go and I just, I start stabbing him, you know, I stabbed him, you know, a couple of times, and, um, you know, I, like four days after that, I got arrested, you know, and then I was going to court, so, um, I ran into my homies, you know, at court, but, yeah, there, there was a lot of times, though, throughout that, before it led up to that, where people, random people were, like, coming up to me and telling me, like, hey, you know, God has a calling. It was actually before I did any of my crimes, you know, like, they're telling me, like, hey, God has a calling for you. Like, don't don't avoid it. Like, go to it. Like, I'm talking about, like, I'm I'm in the hood with my homies, like, deep, you know, homies are playing basketball, some were over here smoking, some were over here drinking. It's like at least 20, 30 heads, you know, and... A white suburban keeps going by. So in my head, I tell my homies, like, hey, be on point for that suburban, you know? Like, because I thought we were going to get shot at, you know? In my head, but that white suburban, um, they end up pulling over and they open the door. It was a guy with his kid, uh, with his wife. He had his kids, you know, and um, I guess he was. He was like, you know, he went between all of my homies, you know, and then just went to me like, hey, you. He's like, hey, can I talk to you, please, man? And I was like, what the hell? Like, who are you, man? Like, he had his kids and his wife right there, you know, and he was telling me like that, that God has a calling for me, you know? And he's all, look, man, like, God has a calling for you, you know, like, you know. You know, it, it kind of, it still stays with me to this day, you know, like, all those things, you know, before I got busted, you know, the lady, that guy, like, he, he stays with me, you know, sometimes it hunts me, you know, because just what if I was to listen, you know, what if I could have made that that decision there and then to to change and give my life to God, you know, or follow that, that, that righteous path, you know, like walk, a good walk, you know, like instead of doing the things that I did, like, what would I be today if I did that, you know? How did they catch you? Like, how did they know that it was you? Uh, the, all right. So, I guess they had camera footage, right? But they couldn't really see my face. One of my cronies got arrested a week after the crime and somehow my nickname got came out you know i can't say how you know because i don't have proof you know but no you know how that goes you have 60 seconds remaining oh no way this what is do you do? What, what do you this think? call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded I, mean, I believe he gave my I'm name. Ah. Uh, yeah. What'd you that say? Is, is that individual still good in the neighborhood or? For him? Yeah. I mean, to me, I know. But, you know, I dropped out, so I can't say nothing no more, you know, because I'm on this right now, you know, like, it took me 11 years, or, you know, 11 years of to finally, like, open my eyes and just drop out, you know, like, I don't want to be a part of that no more.